Hi there, we're Erin and Paola, PhD students in clinical psychology at the Australian National University. We want to talk to you about self-compassion. This is Jane and Betty. Betty has just received her final exam grade and is disappointed with it. Jane can see how upset Betty is. She listens carefully to what Betty has to say and says. Betty, I can see how upset and disappointed you are with your result. I know you studied very hard for the final. It's a really tough spot to be in when something you work so hard for does not turn out the way you expected it to. It's okay to take the time to be hurt and upset. I'm here for you. The next day, Jane receives her final exam grade and it is lower than what she expected to get. She is upset and her mind is full of thoughts like, I'll never get over feeling embarrassed about this failure. I'm the biggest loser ever. I'm such a failure. I'll never graduate. I'll never get a job. I never ever do things right. I'm all alone in this. A lot of us engage in self-criticism when going through a rough time. We might think that being self-critical will motivate us for a better performance next time or that being criticized is what we deserve. Instead, self-criticism leads to disengagement from people and activities important to us. It increases feelings of shame and anxiety and makes us feel worse about ourselves. We saw Jane being compassionate and supportive of Betty yesterday, rather than criticizing her. From this, we know that Jane has the skills to be compassionate and that she would never be critical of her close friend. What would happen if Jane chose self-compassion instead of self-criticism when being upset? Self-compassion is to have compassion for yourself when you're having a difficult time, you fail, or you notice something about yourself that you don't like. It means you are kind, aware, and understanding when confronted with personal failings. There are three elements of self-compassion. Number one, self-kindness. Number two, common humanity. And number three, mindfulness. Self-kindness is being warm and understanding towards ourselves when we suffer, fail, or feel inadequate, rather than ignoring our pain and criticizing ourselves. Common humanity is recognizing that suffering and personal failures are part of the shared human experience. And finally, mindfulness is about becoming aware of the present situation without judgment and taking a balanced approach to negative emotions and thoughts such that they are neither downplayed nor exaggerated. Practicing self-compassion may allow you to engage with and understand your emotions better and be less judgmental of your experiences. Research shows us that practicing self-compassion is associated with reduced self-criticism, shame, stress, depression, anxiety, anger, and other mental health difficulties. People who practice self-compassion adopt a perspective of their experiences and challenges that is kind, wise, and understanding. To help Jane practice self-compassion, she could think back to when she was kind and caring to Betty yesterday. What did she say? What tone did she use? How did she treat Betty? Just like when she was comforting Betty, Jane first needs to acknowledge that she is hurting and that this is a disappointing situation. It is important in this moment for Jane not to downplay or exaggerate her emotions and the given situation. Rather, she should be aware of them as they are without judgment. I'm upset. This is a really tough spot for me to be in. And it's a moment of great disappointment for me. Once Jane has acknowledged her pain, she can connect to the common experience of disappointment and sadness that humans experience, just like Betty did yesterday. You know what? Experiencing disappointment is actually what makes me human. Jane can be kind to herself by reevaluating her self-critical thoughts and arriving at a more balanced and kinder thought. Instead of thinking that I'm a failure, I can actually choose to recognize that my grade on this one exam doesn't actually define who I am as a person. Additionally, Jane could be kind to herself by asking for supports from people close to her, like Betty. 
I think I'll reach out to Betty and see whether she'd like to meet up for a coffee sometime with me. Self-compassion might be a new way for you to relate to yourself. And just like most new things, it will require practice. It will be easier to exercise self-compassion when faced with the inevitable hardships of life. If you are kinder to yourself, more aware of your experiences, and less judgmental of yourself when faced with the everyday struggles. Next time you're hurting and suffering, we encourage you to think of Jane. Choose self-compassion by acknowledging your pain and treating yourself the way you would treat a close friend of yours. If you would like to learn more about self-compassion, please check out the following resources. If this video brings up any difficult thoughts or feelings for you, or you just need someone to talk to, please consider getting in touch with your GP or calling Lifeline on 13 11 14. You may also like to consider the following online resources. This has been a Mind Seeds video brought to you by the College of Health and Medicine at the Australian National University.